Hi everybody, it's Matt here again, your local friendly neighbourhood vestibular migraine sufferer. I hope you're doing relatively okay. hope if you've listened to some of these videos since you've listened to my first ones, you've seen some improvement with your um, condition. Apologies, I look a bit tired. I actually um, stayed, a, well, I woke up last night about four o'clock in the morning and I just was thinking how shit a new Star Wars film looks. So again, just shows you that with a bit of time and a bit of recovery, you can start thinking about other things other than your crappy crappy symptoms so I thought I'd do a video today something I've been wanting to do for a bit but I felt even more inspired to do one on this subject because I saw a great video by Marley Bigger Up and she's known as the vestibular mama bear on Instagram I'll put a link to one of her videos down below but she's great really positive video she's made about how she's got back to some normal life things after being really poorly for about 13 months so alongside Amy shock it uh, we've now got Marley who's really 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 worth watching so check that out but she was talking about a subject that I actually thought was really pertinent and really, really, really worth talking about. So it's kind of tips really on how you get back to the world, having been away from the world, suffering from these these symptoms. So I've kind of got three tips, three, let's get that right. One, two, three, three tips on how I kind of set about doing that. Some of them may work for you, some of them may not, but I thought it was worth throwing them out there. So obviously, so let's 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 get some audio. So we'll start with number one, tip number one. So my first major tip is is actually really really simple and really easy to do. So when you've been ill with this illness, you don't feel like going out. You have become accustomed to staying in or staying, you know, in a darkened room or just trying to trying to make sense of everything. And then of course that goes with that is because you're not going out and because you're not doing some of the very basic things that we do. In everyday life your confidence goes and your mood goes as well so one of the things you can really do that will enable you to at least leave the house and it may not be to go far it may just be for a walk around the garden or whatever is to have some sunglasses sounds really stupid really simple so i've got black ones i've got blue ones you know all sorts of them so why are these important well what they do is they dim down the sensory overload. So as I've had it explained by a doctor, when you're suffering with the vestibular symptoms, your basically brain's getting the overload. It's over relying on its on your eyes, so it just can't process all the information. So what the sunglasses do is they diminish what the eye is seeing. So in that in turn diminishes what the brain has to process. So your brain can actually start to function more normally because it's not getting overloaded and you will you will certainly i think um see a change in your symptoms it won't make them go away it just keeps them dimmed down while you're going about your business so if you're going for example you've got to go and pick the kids up get to the supermarket go in to watch football or whatever um you could stick some sunglasses on and you will probably get some respite from your symptoms while you just do that little trip whatever it may be um so have some backup ones. I've got backup ones in case one. Those actually broke the other day, but I fixed them. I must be a real man. I fixed them. Um, backup ones. And as I've said in my other videos, I've talked about a lot in the other videos, um, the FL41 specs. So these, the Amber Babies, these are really good because they will take down the sensory overload and, and cut down on what your brain has to process the lights. But at the same time, they won't be doing any harm to your eyes, making you you know, no long-term damage in, ter in terms of becoming over-reliant on the sunglasses. So like, like you know, Bono or Andy Taylor from Duran Duran are. So think about investing in some of those. I'll put a link down below again, Axon, Optics America and UK Sports Eyewear, UK Mike Dixon. Check them out, check the links out below. So that's tip number one. Tip number two, <clears throat> now I acknowledge this one just depends on your GP and you know, I'm not a doctor, so I'm not here to say you should take this drug or, you know, take this drug, you know, like Brian Harvey did in E17 when he told kids to take drugs. I'm not doing that. But what's worked for me, and excuse me, I've got heartburn. I always seem to do these videos when I've just eaten something, so I end up like clearing my chest or throat. Sorry about that. It's really annoying. I don't really do that in real life. and I don't notice I do anyway. Heartburn, again, might be one of the symptoms. I, I have had it quite badly since since I've had the vestibular migraine, but anyway, I digress. So as I said, a little tip that I have, that um, it just depends on your doctor though, but what I do is I have and carry around a sedative with me. So in this case, it's a diazepam, well, a prescription of diazepam. It's a small prescription, small amount, because these drugs are um, addictive long-term. 
you'll not get a prescription of these for, for long term use. They're not um along what what's the word? They're not um they're more of an instant drug rather than one that's like works long term over time like sertraline. So they give you instant relief from predominantly from anxiety symptoms. So if you're feeling anxious about going out or you're out somewhere and you feel really anxious, like, oh no, I'm feeling dizzy, these will help with that. And I, from what my understanding from my reading, again, don't quote me on this because I'm not a neurologist, but they also slow down the brain to an extent so that actually it can, in some cases, mean you're not getting as much sensory overload. Um, so I have them with me as a little backup just in case I'm out somewhere and I'm really struggling. So a really quick example, I managed to go to the cricket a couple of weeks ago and I've not been to a sports stadium since this whole episode began because if you've seen my other videos, these symptoms first struck me when I was watching my local football team, Sheffield United, up the blades. So obviously since then the experience having to go to the, to the medical room being looked at by paramedics meant I was really apprehensive about going to a sports stadium. So when I went to the cricket, I felt apprehension on the train my breathing was funny again i think the breathing might be a vestibular symptom i think janet jackson has it and she had to cancel the tour because of it because she has a vestibular migraine so it affects the breathing i don't know for sure it could be anxiety but i don't particularly feel anxious at the moment so anyway i was noticing those symptoms and then got a train there blah blah blah, blah got into the stadium start the match started and i wasn't really enjoying myself i wasn't focusing on the cricket I was more just kind of like, ooh, my breathing feels shit, my feel breathing feels funny. What if this is going to lead to some of the vestibular symptoms that are going to make me pass out here again and I'm going to end up either, you know, having to leave or having to go go to the paramedic again. So what I did was I thought, well, I don't want this day to be spoiled because me and my dad have been playing the cricket a long time, particularly the Ashes series. And now those are happy memories you want to make and retain. So I thought I'm not going to let this stupid illness spoil it. So I actually, I popped a dose of those. So they're two megabytes, megabytes, two MG. See, I, I'm tired, I've had a long day. Um, and I can take two of those at once to make four. So that will settle you down for a bit. So if you can, have a, if you have a good discussion with your doctor and just have a small prescription of those, just for those really, really difficult situations where you actually have to get out of the house and you can't really avoid it. I take them with me to work just in case I need them at work. Fortunately, I've been lucky so far. I haven't really needed any while I've been in the office, which is really good. Again, as I said in my other video, work's a really good distraction, both for the thinking about the symptoms, but also actually just taking your mind off them. And also, uh, finally, I keep saying also, but they also work in, gives you a sense of well-being again and product be feeling productive, and that really helps you. So it kind of draws me on to point three. So that was point two, so now we're on three. My final one, which kind of Marley's video has kind of touched on, which I really liked. She was talking about motivator for you to get better. So um, in her case, it's a daughter. She was speaking about some other people she knows. Um, but I think a, a really kind of motivator is really to set yourself mini goals. And so that actually gives you something to aim for. It, it kind of gives structure. I think when you feel out of control, and when a loss of control, that's when your mood really spirals. But if you can somehow kind of regain control of your something, of controlling your symptoms to an extent if you can, um, I think it really will improve your mood. It, it makes you feel like a surfer who's actually managing surfing the wave rather than the, the waves just washing the surfer away. So I found that setting mini goals really, really has, has helped me kind of get back to the world. So that start off really small. So for example, I remember one of my earliest goals was to try and get on the bus again. So I've actually caught the bus thousands and thousands and thousands of time, times over my lifespan, but it became an issue because I felt dizzy and my breathing felt funny on the bus once and I got off and nearly toppled over after getting off. And of course that put me off like it would put anybody off. So um, I, I had a hesitation about doing that and it's, a, it's, some, it's an unavoidable part of life often if you live on a bus route and you've got no car. So. That was one of the goals I set was well, today I'm going to try and go home on the bus and so I managed to do it so I did it one time it was it was relatively okay and I felt pleased with myself and it lifted my confidence and it made me feel like actually I can you know get beyond this and get better um the second time I did it it was terrible I think I caught it from my mum and dad's into the town centre got off and nearly fell over again and had to it was just so bizarre but so it's not going to be a smooth road if you set yourself a goal you might achieve it, great. You might achieve it once, then not achieve it the next time. 
but the trick is to not get downhearted. Don't let that beat you down. Try it again. If you, at first you don't succeed, try and try again. The Smashing Pumpkins, try, try, try. Keep giving it a bit of a try. Don't obviously listen to your body. Don't overdo it, but keep trying these little goals. And gradually over time, you will start building them up. And then you'll notice your confidence lifting and you'll also notice that actually I can tolerate this a bit better than I thought. And then also from a scientific point of view, what I'm told, again, I'm no neurologist, so I don't know for sure, but from bits I've been read and talking to my best to be a physio, your brain then, when it's going to these stimulating environments, can start to actually relearn. And I know with the migraine, it's difficult until you can get the right drug. I'm not there yet. I've not found the right drug. Um, but your brain can then start to relearn and recompensate and and that will get you on the route to feeling better. So, you know, if you just stayed inside, your brain's not going to even remotely try and relearn. It, it needs stimulation. We are, you know, we are beings that need stimulation. Our brain needs stimulation. So to fix itself, it needs stimulation. That, you know, it's the whole idea of vestibular physio, isn't it? So there'd be my three main tips. Now I know it's daunting. So when my vestibular physio said, right, what I think you need to do is just start getting back to the world a bit and see how you go. So go to the gym, she said, take the glasses. So they were there as a comfort blanket. So that's why they're one of my tips, but try what it's like without them. So I've been doing that. I've been challenging myself. I remember thinking at the time, oh shit, this is, how do I do that? It feels very daunting, you know, but you have to give it a go uh, and see what happens. I'm not saying it's going to cure you. I'm not saying it's going to dramatically improve things but I think over time I think it will chip away at this goddamn illness and, and start to ease its power um, I, I mean you know I, to, to to be frank you know there comes a point I think where you have to say fuck you to this stupid illness I'm going to start doing the things I enjoy again you're not going to rob me of my you know my time with my kids or whatever you're not going to spoil my day I'm not going to stay in and miss this thing I've always wanted to do like for me with the Ashes Cricket with my dad I'm going to say fuck you and I'm going to try it and I'm going to give it a go. So I think that's really, really important. So I hope some of that's kind of useful. Um, like I say, um, check out my other videos. Uh, there's, I've done a few now on various subjects. Um, check out Marley's videos. Keep watching, looking out for anything by Amy, Amy Shockett, the legend that is Amy. Um, look us up on Instagram. Uh, I'm on there as Cordelia Smile. Um, send me your, uh, send me a message if you want anything like that. I do try and reply to any other messages you post at the bottom of the videos and, and of course on the on the vestibular Facebook page. So um, message me if, if if you want. It's it's good to hear from other sufferers and it's good to share tips. So hope that's okay. I'm gonna I say that I always make these videos after eating, hence why I have heartburn during them. I had actually only had a protein bar, so I'm actually gonna go and get my tea now. So um, you take care. And remember, as you were, you'll be again. Bye for now.